arty friends. So an interesting topic came up in the Ink Drop Cafe Discord this evening. And if you guys aren't familiar with Ink Drop Cafe, head on over to inkdropcafe.com and check it out. It is a wonderful webcomic collective of which my baby, Seven Inch Carrot, is a part of. But anyway, we were talking about ink compatibility and um, I have a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of experience with ink compatibility. Anybody who's read the blog and watches this channel knows I play around a lot with ink and watercolor and alcohol markers. But what happened is this person had inked a piece and they had used Prismacolor markers and they said they'd use multi-liners. And when they went to watercolor over it, they said one of the two smeared. Now they didn't say which, and they didn't tell me what paper they were using. They did say they were not using a watercolor paper. So we have a super duper, 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 super cheap Muji sketchbook. I mean, this thing is like, mm, no, not watercolor at all. Um, and I would use a coated paper and I may end up using a coated paper. Um, but what I had suggested is you let your ink dry for 24 hours. That allows your inks to cure. It doesn't matter what ink you're using. That's going to give you the best results when you're erasing to prevent ghosting, which is when your ink lifts off the paper. And it's also going to help prevent smearing because the ink has evaporated and soaked in and bonded with the paper. However, not everybody can do that. Not everybody has that kind of time. You should at least let it cure for an hour for your best results. Again, I was not told how much time they allowed to ellipse. So we are gonna test quite a few different brands here. And I'm familiar with the compatibility, but we'll see if I am surprised. We have three Micron. These are made by Soccer of America brush pins using their Pigma system. This is the Pigma system is supposed to be archival, light fast. Um, it is supposedly alcohol marker proof, waterproof. And I'm using the colored ones because you guys have seen me use burp, 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 these all the time on this channel. These are the Pigma brushes. They're great, they're waterproof, they're alcohol marker proof. I use them all the time. Um, we're also going to use these Prismacolor markers. Now I don't use these nearly as much. Um, not for any particular reason, I just don't. I have amassed quite a collection of them, but I just don't use them. I don't know why. Um, these are supposed to be waterproof and alcohol marker proof. They're supposed to go with the alcohol markers that they make, the Prismacolor markers. We're going to be testing out the Copic multi-liners. Uh, also, these are supposed to be archival. They're supposed to be waterproof. They're supposed to be alcohol marker proof. They're pigment ink. Usually when you see pigment ink, that is a good thing. Now, are these pigment ink? I don't know. I'd have to do, I'd have to do some digging. They're made in Japan now. Um, and these are the pigment system as a pigment ink. And we're going to also take a look at the Faber-Castell pit, pit pins. These are, um, these are not the brush ones. These are the fine ones. I use my brush ones for other types of illustration, but these are India ink. So they are probably not going to be alcohol marker proof if they use shellac, but they will probably be waterproof if they use, um, they are waterproof. I know for a fact they're waterproof uh, on the right paper after they've been allowed to dry fully. That's always the thing, you let it dry for it fully. And then we have, and I can grab some more of these. These are the Stabilos. I see people use them all the time. They are not waterproof. In fact, I've got some cool fluorescent ones, so we'll use those too. They're not waterproof, but they might, might not be alcohol marker proof. Usually things that are not waterproof are alcohol marker proof. And the reason for that is they use different solvents. So we're gonna do, I want to do a right now test, an hour from now test, except it's like 11, 22 at night. So I don't know if I really wanna like wait an hour. And I wanna do a 24 hour test. So we're gonna do the right now test. And we're gonna start, doo -doop, doo -doop, doo -doop. actually I should be a smarty, smarty for the party. And I should label this, right? Like a smart person. we're going to do all three colors. And as soon as it goes down, I'm going to hit it with some clean water. Wow, look at that. I did not see I learned something today. I didn't know that with immediate water application, 
Soccer at Pigma runs. That's not surprising. Most of these, most of these, if they haven't had time to cure, they're gonna run. They're gonna smear. And is why I tell you to let them cure. Also, smears like Dickens with alcohol marker. We'll try the red next. Oh, yeah. That's not, I mean, it's pretty. Um, that's not really something you want to see in your work. And then we'll try the brown. So we now know that if Pigma is not allowed to dry, it doesn't matter what you're going to use over it, it's going to make it smear. Again, not surprising. You could probably use your finger and smear it. Oogly doogly. We're going to end up using up all my paper. That's why I should be on salary, guys. So, next Lee, we're going to do the Prisma color. Same, same, same. Huh. I think I grabbed the same colors, too. I don't know why I did that. So this one moves less. It still moves though. You still you still get some smearing. I have to do some digging and find out what these are made from. It's more smearing. Raise your hand if you're surprised. If you watch this channel regularly, you better not be surprised. Because we talk about letting it cure overnight all the time. Always talking about ink curing overnight. Always. And we're testing multiple colors because, so see, some of them will move more than others. But um, it just happens. Some, some dyes are just going to be more reactive than others. So it's nice to have a range. I think we even have room on here for the Faber Castell. And these are India ink and they are not waterproof. You can blend them very easily in fact. And, and I have a video coming up eventually about using these on Yupo and using a Tombow ABT to blend them. But once they've had a chance to dry, and they're never really gonna dry on you, Bo. So, <laughs> that's a thing. But once they're dry, they become waterproof. Okay, so far, everything we've tested when it is, with an immediate application, runs like the Dickens with both alcohol and water. Not surprising, not shocking, not gonna have to reinvent the wheel. I'm gonna grab those Copics. Did you know these are, I believe, discontinued? Ooh, that's pretty. They dry really quick too, so I'm trying to be swift in order to get some of that cool blendy blender. That was, I believe, sky blue, and here is turquoise. Oh, no, no, it's drying. No, I never used it. I never, I never got around to using it. I might be able to, I'm pretty good at resuscitating things. However, with that, because I don't know what they're using as their solvent, I don't know that I can resuscitate that. With a water-based, like most fine liners, I would just inject some water 
or soak it with water. Ooh, pretty, pretty, pretty. What I could do is um, I could just switch out the cartridge if I can find another turquoise. They may still make turquoise for um, their fine liner tip multi liners. Okay, it's the Copics. Now we're going to do the water based. And these are Stabilos. And I will remind you again, this isn't marker paper. This isn't watercolor paper. This isn't any special paper at all. So um, I don't think there's any coating on it. I don't think it really takes water particularly well. It tends to buckle. It's not, it's not great paper. Uh, it's kind of generic paper. If you guys want to see me do like a really comprehensive test where we tested on these on watercolor paper, with the same methods and we test it on a marker paper or a coated paper like plate bristol which has like a clay coating on it uh we can do that but i'm gonna have to hear from you so let me hear your voices in the comments and let me know if that's a thing you need but i feel like this test is for the most part uh indicative enough to give you an idea and I'm kind of disappointed because the Stabilos, I've seen people do like watercolor effects with them and, I'm, and I've done watercolor effects with them and they're work, I'm working wet into wet and they're not moving a whole lot. So that was immediate application. Pretty much nothing. Nothing is gonna not move at all. None of the things that are rated, you gotta let it dry. So I'm not gonna do the hour thing because I'm not staying up all night, uh, but I will do I will do where I come in and check in on it tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna hang out with you guys. I'll zoom out a little bit. Hang out with you guys, yammer at you guys. And get this all set up for tomorrow. So we have to do two swatches of color because we're doing water we're doing alcohol and i know there's like way more solvents i mean chart pack ad markers use like a xylene based thing and they have their own compatibility concerns and like who like let's be real like who really uses them all that often raise your hand it's okay you don't have to be ashamed not the spectra ad's they're new ones because those are alcohol based raise your hand if you use chart pack on the regular here, my, my dear viewers. It's okay. It's cool, I don't, but it's cool if you do. And by raise your hand, I mean like, say something in the comments. <laughs> Tell me, you can call me a fool. A fool for letting this Copic die. We might be able to get all of them, all of them on one sheet, which would be kind of cool because while I like doing these kind of compatibility tests, I don't like using up all my supplies on compatibility tests. It's not fair. It's cute. I love you guys. I want you to be happy. I don't want you to have ruined art because you used the wrong pen at the wrong time with the wrong media. Almost done, almost done, but almost done. It'll probably be like 12 hours because I'm lazy. I'm lazy, a lazy butt. Actually, that's not true. I wake up late, but I stay up super late and hang out and work on stuff for y'all and for myself. All right, so we have two swatches of each color, one for alcohol marker, one for watercolor. We're doing Pigma Copic, Prisma, Faber-Castell, and Stabilo. And we're gonna see each other in the morning.
All right, guys, so it has been 12 hours. It's time to break out the water and alcohol marker and see how much these move. And I'm just gonna sop on the water. Somewhat surprisingly, with scrubbing, the pigma moves a bit, but I bet on the right paper, it would move a lot less. And it seems that the purple moves the most. The other colors aren't moving nearly as much. Copic isn't moving at all. Let's do. Prisma hasn't moved. Faber Castell hasn't moved. And Stabilo moved which is not surprising because it is water-based. All right, time for the alcohol marker. Wow, that purple pigma, I don't normally, I don't know that I've ever used it to line, line art. Red moved, brown stayed okay. That's really surprising. Whereas Copic doesn't move. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Prisma moved a lot less. So if you want a purple brush fine or a brush pen, go with the Prisma because it has not moved. Faber Castell moved a little, but honestly, I thought it would move a lot. I did not realize that you could use these India ink pens with alcohol markers. There's often compatibility issues with India ink. And then the Stabilos don't move at all because they are water-based. So they are not, they're probably not going to be alcohol marker reactive. So um, really the only one you need to look out for for smearing is the Pigma Purple. Da -da 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 -da. The red will smear a little bit. The brown is mostly fine. And then the rest are pretty stable. So I hope you found this compatibility video helpful, useful, and inspiring. If you want to see me test this on watercolor paper and on plate bristle, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you share this video with your friends. That way they won't make the same mistakes and everybody can have amazing smear-free line art. And keep an eye on this channel for more fantastically helpful art videos. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you soon. I'm Becca Hilburn. Bye guys.